Hi everybody, Susie Q here and welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. Today I'm moving my pea puffers. Moving my pea puffers downstairs into my new fish room. Almost completed fish room. I'm going to move them into a 20 gallon long. So let's go check out how I'm aquascaping this 20 gallon long for my pea puffers. And here's the 20 long. So they're coming from the 20 high, go into this 20 long. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain it and aquascape it. I want to make it look like a miniature setting for my pea puffers. So they're going to have a grass area. They're going to have a walkway. They're going to have their castle. Here's what it looked like about a year ago. And this is in their 20 gallon high upstairs. Since this time, it has become overgrown and I need to move this tank downstairs. So before I talk about the move, let me talk a little bit about the puffers. They come from the west coast of southern India and they are absolutely adorable. They got tons of nicknames. The dwarf puffer, pygmy puffer, gold green dwarf puffer, blue eyed puffers, malabar puffers. I call them pea puffers, but I believe their scientific name is Pea puffers. Their lifespan is about four years and the males, uh, one of the largest males I've seen gets almost an inch but norm would be about three quarters of an inch and the females are just a little bit smaller. They love very heavily planted tanks because they like to set up their own territories and they're adorable when they go to sleep. They go lie on like little leaves like their hammocks and fall asleep. It's I, I could just watch them all the time. I make sure that this pretty slow moving flow, I use sponge filters in all my tanks. And they're, I believe that they're intelligent. They're curious, their eyes move independently of each other, so they like, they're very stealth-like. So as far as their diet, they like black worms, white worms, they love frozen blood worms, and they love snails. I can't breed snails fast enough. So during this move, when I had to put them down in a tank for a day or two, I put them in the snail tank. And they love that. So, and their beak doesn't need to be trimmed like their larger puffer counterparts. They actually, when they're eating the snails, they're eating the inside of the snails. I've never seen my pea puffers eat the shell of a snail. And I've never seen their beaks get, I've never seen their beaks grow extremely large. So with that being said, let's go set up their castle again because I believe these pea puffers deserve a castle setting. And I'm going to be putting them in this new 20 long. So let's go check it out. So as I'm draining it and cleaning it, I'm putting where I want the castle so I know where the pathway should go. So right now I just laid down the stone where I don't want the green grass lawn to be. I don't know if this is making sense but and I really wish I had some more like materials to use to like separate that out and I'm just doing with what I have on hand right here at the basement. So let's hope this works. Okay I've started by adding some swords. I put my bulbitis in. I don't know if you can see this. Does that help? No. I put some bulbitis in back there to make it look almost foresty. And now I'm gonna work on some, hopefully, ground cover. I'm gonna leave it on for a minute to see if that helps. These are the, some of the plants that I have to work with. I have some more of those swords. I got some Val, Crips. I got a couple plants here to work with. And I'm gonna be growing some Java moss behind the castle in case anybody feels like breeding. I used green gravel to cover the aqua soil until the plants can grow in like a lush carpet. And there's the pea puffer castle, the front lawn, the little walkway over the bridge. Okay, I feel very childlike.
<laughs> I don't know how it's gonna come out, but thanks for checking out my 20 gallon long pea puffer aquascape.